You know, Tony, too many people take their voices for granted. It's a shame. The voice is one of the marvels of creation. Do you know how it works? Of course I know how the voice works. Everybody knows how the voice works. How does the voice work? <laughs> works like a car. Like a car. Like a car. The voice is like a car because they both make noise. My colleague Brad Story actually worked for a company and designed mufflers, and I credit him with his analogy, actually, of the voice in the car. Both machines, the human and the car, convert energy from one type to another, from chemical to mechanical first, and then finally to acoustic energy. In the case of the car, of course, the source of energy is chemical energy from the gasoline. In the human, it's basically the energy from the muscles that drive the lungs and push air. In a car, the valves open and close, and we get big bursts of sound coming out from the engine. In the case of the human voice, the muscles around the lungs produce a force against the lungs, and then the air gets expelled, and the vocal folds begin to vibrate. The uh, vocal folds are two small pieces of flesh that are in our larynx, in our voice box, and they have to vibrate in order to make sound. Not only do they have to vibrate there, but they have to collide in the process. Just like in a hand clap, I can go back and forth and you hear nothing. But the minute I contact the two together, then you start hearing sound. It's that sudden interruption of the air by making complete closure that gives us the many frequencies that we need in the sound. We take in air through negative pressure developed by expansion of the chest. And as that air releases passively and we fix our vocal folds in a particular position, the vocal folds vibrate. Now the pitch of that sound is determined by the speed with which the air flows through and a couple of other factors, but probably most importantly is the tension on the vocal folds or the position of the vocal folds. The mass and the tension and the elasticity of the vocal cords may cause different vibrations. And as such, the acoustic signal may vary. Sometimes people have simulated or attempted to measure the sound that's generated here. And what they hear is almost a buzzing sound. Uh, not a nice sounding voice as we hear out here, but a buzzing sound begins here. And that sound then is shaped by the vocal tract and resonant properties are imposed on that sound to generate a voice that sounds as a human voice does. If you were to hear the sound of our larynx without the rest of the vocal tract, it would sound kind of not like what we're used to hearing. What shall I go? What shall I do? Some of the sound that is uh, initiated right here, here at the vocal folds uh, should get out to the listener, but we want to condition it. We want to take some of its frequencies and uh, downplay them or dampen them, and then we want to enhance some other frequencies. And so there's another piece in this whole uh, similarity between the car and the human. Uh, what does the muffler do? The muffler is designed to condition the sound, if you will, like an air conditioner conditions the air. The muffler is made of series of sections of pipe, and they expand and contract. This repeated expansion and contraction filters the sound and takes out the frequencies that we don't want. It does the same thing in the voice. The sound we produce is fairly dull by itself, but when you filter it with a vocal tract, some of the frequencies are reflected in and out, and they don't come out very well, and others penetrate right through. And that selectiveness of the frequencies then helps us decide whether it's an oo or an ah or an e that's being said, or even whether it's one kind of a voice quality or another. <laughs> 